Mountbatten's role in this transition as pivotal as he navigated the complex interplay of political ambitions and the stark reality of communal tensions. So Cyril Radcliffe was a British lawyer with no prior experience in India was tasked with the incredibly complex and sensitive job of demarcating the boundaries between the new nations, the India and Pakistan. Radcliffe was the chairman of the two boundary commissions, one for Bengal and the other for the Punjab, set up to decide the dividing lines based on religious demographics. Radcliffe arrived in India on July 8, 1947 five weeks before the date of independence. His specialty was not cartography or ethnography, but law, which made the task even more challenging given the intricate tapestry of the Indian demographic and geographical landscape. He had never been to India before and thus had no personal understanding of its society, geography, or the profound cultural implications of his task. The problems Radcliffe faced were enormous and multifaceted. He had to pore over maps and census data, trying to draw borders that would divide not just land, but also the populations, resources, and even families. The partition was supposed to create a Muslim-majority Pakistan and a Hindu-majority India but the reality on the ground was not so neatly divided. There were areas with mixed population and towns and cities where Hindus, Muslims and Sikhs had lived together for centuries. One of the major challenges was the division of major cities like Lahore and Kolkata. Lahore had a Muslim majority, but was also a historically significant city for Sikhs and Hindus as it was closely integrated with the Hindu-majority areas that surrounded it. Ultimately, Lahore was awarded to Pakistan, which came as a surprise to many. Similarly, Calcutta, despite having a significant Muslim population, was allocated to India, mainly due to its economic importance and large Hindu population. Radcliffe's decisions were made under intense pressure and tight deadlines with limited survey data and amidst rampant violence. His commission had to work in an atmosphere of hostility, members from both the Hindu and Muslim sides pushing for their interests. The actual division of territory often came down to the religious majority in each district, but even this was not a simple matter, as economic factors, administrative convenience, and strategic locations had to be considered. After completing his task, Radcliffe destroyed all his papers and refused his fee for the commission work. He left India before the borders were made public. And the Radcliffe Line, as it came to be known, was announced on August 17, 1947, two days after India and Pakistan gained their independence. The hastily and somewhat arbitrary nature of this partition led to widespread confusion and bloodshed as millions of people found themselves on the wrong side of the border overnight. Massive population exchanges began, accompanied by horrific communal violence. Radcliffe later reflected on the assignment with regret, acknowledging the impossibility of creating a line that could neatly divide the subcontinent without grave repercussions lack of familiarity with the Indian subcontinent and the rushed time frame inevitably led to decisions that have been both criticized and defended over the years. The line he drew has had enduring and profound effects on the region, marking not just a geographical boundary, but a deep social and political divide that persists to this day. As the clock struck midnight on August 15, 1947, a new chapter began for the subcontinent. It was not just the end of colonial rule, but the birth of two nations, the culmination of a struggle that had engaged an entire generation. The legacy of these events and 
leaders is etched in the annals of history, shaping the narrative of a land that had long sought to master its own destiny. In conclusion, the partition of India was not merely the division of territory, but a profound transformation of colonial power dynamics, national identities, and the destinies of millions. As Mountbatten faded into the backdrop of history, he left behind a legacy interwoven with the final act of the British Raj. The leaders of India, each with their unique vision, stepped into the roles destined for them in this newly independent nation. Mountbatten himself, though a member of the British establishment, had played a role in a Congress-led transition that would forever change the face of South Asia. In the next episodes, we will further discuss on the historical events after 1947. Please subscribe to stay notified with the video. Thank you and have a great day.